Hi everybody, welcome back to another student med video and today we're going to be discussing CKD which stands for chronic kidney disease. CKD is a decrease in renal function and it is permanent and often progressive. There are a wide range of causes and risk factors that lead to the development of CKD. The most common is diabetes where high blood sugar damages the blood vessels inside the kidney. The next most common is hypertension, where high blood pressure also damages the vessels inside the kidney. Advanced age also raises the likelihood of developing CKD. Glomerulonephritis, which is inflammation of the kidney. Polycystic kidney disease, which is an autosomal dominant condition in which multiple cysts form inside the kidney. Patients who are taking nephrotoxic medication, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And smoking is also a risk factor for developing CKD. A patient with CKD may present totally asymptomatic. However, other patients also report symptoms of pruritus, which is itching, edema, particularly of the ankles or the wrists, hypertension, nausea, muscle cramps, and also pallor. To investigate whether or not somebody has CKD, we would do a range of tests. First on the list would be a blood test. We would look at the patient's use and ease and determine their estimated glomerular filtration rate. To confirm a diagnosis of CKD, we would need to perform two tests at least three months apart. This ensures that if there is a drop in their estimated glomerular filtration rate, that it's not acute in nature. We would also perform urinalysis, where we would look at the albumin to creatinine ratio, in which we can determine the presence of proteinuria, and we would perform a dipstick test to look for the presence of red blood cells in the urine. Finally, we would also do some imaging. A renal ultrasound is preferred, where we may pick up the presence of polycystic kidney disease or an obstruction, such as kidney stones. So let's take a look at how we would determine how severe a patient's CKD is. To stage a patient's CKD, there are actually two components. We need to determine the G-score, which is based on the patient's estimated glomerular filtration rate, and we would need to determine the A-score, which is based on the albumin to creatinine ratio. The G-score can be either 1, 2, 3A, 3B, 4 or 5 where a higher G-score indicates a lower glomerular filtration rate. A G-score of 5, which indicates a patient's glomerular filtration rate is less than 15, is also called end-stage renal failure. Now let's take a look at the A-score. The A-score can be either 1, 2 or 3, where a higher A-score indicates a worsening level of proteinuria. It's important to note that a patient does not have CKD if they have an A-score of A1 combined with a G-score of either 1 or 2. And this is because as we age, our glomerular filtration rate will naturally fall in absence of any kidney pathology. So let's take a patient with an estimated glomerular filtration rate of 52 and an albumin to creatinine ratio of 15 milligrams per millimole. We would say that this patient has CKD stage G3A A2. Let's take a look at some complications associated with CKD. Many patients have anemia due to the decreased release of erythropoietin. And some people also develop renal bone disease, which is due to a combination between the hyperphosphatemia and low serum levels of vitamin D. If you'd like to check out the exact pathophysiology behind renal bone disease in CKD, then check out my other video linked in the description. Other patients with CKD may also develop cardiovascular disease or peripheral neuropathy. Finally, let's look at how CKD should be managed. The main focus revolves around preventing the worsening of renal function. And this can be achieved by reducing hypertension, either through ACE inhibitors such as Ramipril, and also making lifestyle changes such as losing weight if the patient has a high BMI, we also want to optimise the patient's blood sugar, which can be achieved by either starting or changing their diabetic medication. 
And if the patient's CKD is secondary to glomerulonephritis, then it's also important to treat the glomerulonephritis, which is achieved through a course of corticosteroids. The other area of management revolves around treating complications associated with CKD. So for patients with anemia, they will be given iron tablets or an iron infusion, along with EPO injections. For those with renal bone disease, they will be advised to decrease their phosphate intake and also be provided with a vitamin D supplement. And for patients with end-stage renal failure, which if we remember is an EGFR of less than 15, then they will be offered either dialysis treatment or, if eligible, a renal transplant. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to find out anything more about the kidneys, then please do check out my other videos.